Okay, so in three, two. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, May 1st, 2023. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of the committee, at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison, may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faya, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Good evening. Ms. Harvey? Present. Mr. Young? Present. Mr. McMillian? Present. Thank you. Thank you. And now, Ms. Faye, will you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Mr. Chris Hartlove? Present. Mr. Cameron Williams? Oh, sorry, present. <laughs> Mr. Jim Corns? Mr. Pete Dixit? Pre present. Sorry. Present. Ms. Kimberly Ferguson? Present. Ms. Megan Shea? Present. Mr. Merrill Fleet? Present. Ms. Melanie Webster? Present. Mr. John Salerno? Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Thank you. Thank you. So before we get, begin today, I just want to note that due to some time constraints on behalf of our staff members, we are going to start contracts today with contract number five, move five through 10, and then start at one. So our first contract is contract five, ARA 21819, fuel, gasoline, diesel, transport, and tank wagon. And for that, I call on Mr. Dixit. Please proceed. So good evening and thank you very much for accommodating my time. Um, Mr. Hartlove and Ms. Harvey, thanks again. The first contract that I have is item five, ARA 218.19 is for fuel, gasoline and diesel for facilities and transportation vehicles. A major part of that is for transportation vehicles. The request is for consent to assignment. The name of the company has changed from PAPCO Incorporated to World Fuel Services Incorporated, and there is no change in amount or vendors. Is there any discussion? OK, hearing none. We will move to contract number six, PCR 24112 Energy Consultant. And for that, I call on Mr. Dixit. So the next contract, PCR 241-12, is for Energy Consultant, which is hired by BrickPack, which is a regional cooperative for purchasing energy commodities. This amount is our share of that contract and uh, the request is to approve the name change, which is consent to assignment, and add the additional amount to bring the total to 610000 the additional amount being $30,000. Are there any questions or discussion? Thank you, Dr. McComas. We see that you're in attendance. Hearing no questions or discussion for this contract, uh, we will proceed to the next. 
the next, next con go ahead mr dixit the next contract item 7 is gda-312-23 this is for food waste commercial composting services the amount of the contract is $355,000 $950. The term is for five years. It is consistent with the board policy 3540 for energy conservation and sustainability to reduce the carbon footprint of BCPS. Uh, we continue to expand this program and the services of this company is needed. Ms. Harvey, I have a question. Questions. Ms. Harvey, Mr. I have a question. Please proceed, Mr. McMillian. Mr. P, can, can, is there anybody there that can describe how this is taking place in a schoolhouse? Are we teaching like elementary kids to, you, you know, to when they go up to get rid of their trash to select which items to, to put in a compost? How are we doing that? So I'll give you what I know, and if you need even more, I'll try to get that for you. So we started the pilot program for three schools, Kenwood High School, Wellwood International Elementary School, and Lyons Mill Elementary School. Gradually, we have expanded it now to 12 schools. And so now I'll come back to your question. The contract supports the food waste composting program at these schools. It establishes a lunchtime routine for all students, faculty, and staff involved to discard all cafeteria lunch waste in the most efficient way possible, starting with non-compostable to non-recyclable trash, that is sandwich bags, candy wrappers, then recycling all acceptable items like water bottles, milk jugs, and finally all food waste in compostable food serving trays and tableware. So this is really, uh, it's, it's a, a can provided by the company and the schools make sure that eligible items are put in that can, somewhat similar to recycling program and the companies take that and they compost it. Okay, great. Thanks, Mr. Pete. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank you for asking that question. Mr. Dixit, I have a question. This is Mrs. Harvey. What happens with the compost and, and do we have data on production, value, usage? So I'll, I'll share with you. That's a, that's a very good question. Uh, the composts are picked up by twice by the clean with the company and is tracked and reported on a monthly basis. So we have record of what is picked up. Um, unit price for each bin, including twice weekly collection is $21. If you have to replace the bin, it's $100. There are three bins in elementary school, four in middle school and five in high school. So what we have are uh, anticipated expenditure, uh, price per bin for high school. And I think your question was, what happens to that? And I'm not sure um, if the, the total quantity is 36,495 pounds or 18.25 tons of food waste that have been diverted from county landfill at, as of March 23. So I think I have provided some of that. 16.55 uh, metric ton of carbon dioxide have been avoided as of March 2023. These are some of the statistics that I have that I save in preparation for this presentation. If you need anything more, I'll be more than glad to get it for you. I, I do just want one clarification, one additional clarification, and thank you for providing that. It's good to see, uh, you know, 18 tons of uh, compostable materials. It's a lot of uh, compostable uh, materials. But are we 
so we contract with this company to to put this compost program in place and we compost and the company comes and picks up the bins that has the compost in it but i'm not sure what happens to it then are is it for our use in our uh facilities plan for landscaping and you how is the compost used or does the company retain the compost for their own usage so from what i know company takes the compost and they do whatever they have to do. Uh, a report is provided monthly with the quantity of food waste collected each month at participating school and the year to date total for the school year. So the purpose is to get rid of that uh, material and, and convert it into compost. What I don't know whether they give it to us from what I know, it doesn't come back to us but I can confirm that and get back. That would be helpful. Uh, you know, we're paying the company to execute the program, but they're getting, if they're using it, that seems like an added benefit to the company, which could possibly be an added benefit to the system. I'm not sure how that works, but it would be helpful to know. So I, there, will, I will definitely get that information for you and get back to you. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Are there any further questions yes or discussion yes miss harvey i have a question mr young please proceed mr dixon emory young um you mentioned the initial cost for the bins is 21 dollars, and a replacement cost is a hundred dollars but what happens if we find that you know for example at the high school i think you said they get five bins that that's not a sufficient quantity a multi-part question. So we have not received requests for additional bins, but if we get it, uh, I'm reasonably sure that we can get it. Uh, from our experience, we have found that three bins for elementary school, four for middle school, and five for high schools um, are adequate. Also, the quantity of bins deployed are adjusted based on student enrollment and or quantity of food waste that is generated during the opening month of the school year. So what that tells me that if we feel that there is more needed because of student enrollment, yes, we can get that. Okay, and the other part you mentioned, they pick up twice a week. Um, so does that mean, you know, the other days that they do not pick up, that the bins are sitting in the school with um, food in them? And if so, um, how are they secured such that they do not attract any unwelcome visitors? So those bins are secure. Uh, we have not received any complaint about any of those issues. Should we get those issues, that will be handled and we'll make sure that there are no complaints. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with contract eight. So the next contract eight is ASI-817-21. This is for job order contracting. Request is to extend the contract for one more year. There are no additional funds needed. There is no change in vendors. Are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with contract nine. Contract nine is NTA-506-23. This is for a chiller replacement and chiller is part of the air conditioning system where the chilled water is created. So chiller replacement for Essex Elementary School. Contract amount is $789,580. That includes 10% contingencies. There were six bidders, and the lowest bidder is Denver Elect Incorporated. This is part of the capital improvement program that board approved, and your request, your approval is requested. Are there any questions?
Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with contract 10. The contract 10 is DEI-602-23. This is for running track resurfacing at Hereford High School. Amount including and contingency is $686,539. And the only vendor is American Asphalt Paving Company and board's approval is requested. Are there any questions? Thank you so much, Mr. Dixit. Thank you very much, and my gratitude again for adjusting the time for me. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a good evening. Good evening, too. We will now proceed with contract number one, which will be presented by Mr. Hartlove. Mr. Hartlove, please proceed. Good evening. Uh, first, con uh, first con uh, contract one, JBO-720-23, VEX Robotics Instructional Materials. This is a new contract for VEX Robotics Instructional Materials for the Office of Career and Technology Education and Fine Arts. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and a contract spending authority of $750,000. And staff is on hand to answer any questions if you have them. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlove, please proceed with contract two. GDA-306-23, web-based college and career exploration platform. This is a new competitively bid contract for college and career exploration platform for the Office of School Counseling. Approval is requested for a five-year, one-month contract with the option for a five-year extension with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1,216,500. I have a question, Mr. Hartlove. This is Mrs. Harvey. Sure. This, this is a, just help me understand this platform. This is a platform where students can go on to uh, explore colleges, uh, look at acceptance criteria, and uh, look at areas of study, those kinds of things. Uh, yes, and I believe this is a replacement for others, uh, uh, another system that we have. Um, I see that Dr. Ferguson is has has joined us, and she is uh, has more detail on this than do I. Uh, Dr. Ferguson, if you want to uh, jump in, sure. Uh, before sure. you jump in, Dr. Ferguson, let me just um, ask this other part to the question, so you don't have to <laughs> bifurcate your answer. Um, Mr. Hartlove answered the first part, which was we have a we have a system or have had a system. Can you name that system and then talk to us about why we are replacing it and and what this system offers that the other system didn't? And then can you talk a little bit about usage of the system historically? Thank you for that question. Um, so we are replacing the current system, which is Naviance. Um, we are replacing that system because this particular system has um, many more features that we we did not have in the former system. Um, that includes um, uh, engagement fe features related to building self-knowledge, students' ability to um, build self-knowledge. These are engagement tools, explore options for career planning, creating a plan, um, and then also this particular um, system is uh, what exceeds the WCAG 2.1 standards. It also has um, supports multiple languages for Spanish-speaking students and families. Um, it has the ASVAB practice test, which wasn't available in the former um, uh, tool, which is the test for students interested in going into the military. It includes a personality style assessment test based on the Holland Code, um, which wasn't available in the previous, um, previous platform. Um, it includes um, uh, the parent single sign-on, translation, text-to-speech, and as I said before, the vocational military post-secondary uh, plan tracking. 
Um, there are cut there are also are customizable career pathways um, that are included in this particular platform that wasn't in the previous platform. Um, so as far as the usage of the previous platform, I don't have the specific numbers in front of me. I can get that information for you. Um, so I don't want to misquote myself. Of course, of course. Thank you for that information. It sounds like there's some additional features that would be helpful to our our students. What is, is this program? The name of the company is it called Zello or it's Zello? Yes, that that is the name of the program. It is. OK. Are there any other questions? Miss Harvey, I have a question. Absolutely, Mr. McMillian, please proceed. Uh, Dr. Ferguson, did you? I received an email. I think it was it was yesterday from a woman named Katie Fang. Did you see that email? I sent it. I didn't realize that sent it to you, but I sent it to Mr. Hartlob and Miss Webster and a bunch of people. Did you receive that? Yes. So we've been receiving emails from Miss Fang for quite some time now. Okay. Is there any substance to what she's saying? And and I would just say up front, we want to make sure we're general in our since it's a public meeting. I am I am unaware of any um. We've not investigated any merit to what to her comments, so I can't really comment on what she's saying. Um, we we went through an RFP process, and um, this was the outcome of the process. Right, and, and Mr. McMillian, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I also have uh, 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 Ms. Webster, and she can speak to the procurement because I, I think it's really more a question of how it was procured rather than than what it does. So I think uh, Ms. Webster, if you want to uh, jump in, yeah. and <laughs> And talk about the procurement process. And and Ms. Sure. Wester, I deliberately included you on that because I figured that you were involved in that process. So sure, please yeah. share, please share some information with us. Sure, I appreciate that. Um, as Dr. Ferguson mentioned, this was a formal request for proposal. Um, we received eight proposals from different companies. Um, two of them were not registered with the federal government, so they did not proceed any farther. But the team of six evaluators um, went through the, um, the technical proposals and the pricing proposals. They went through a demonstration of each of these pro of the two shortlisted pro products, in addition to having a sandbox environment um, for both of the two products so they could test them. And then, um, so what you, and we also checked references for that were provided from both of those two companies. Um, the references all came back with no issues. So we are confident that the team of evaluators has selected indeed the, the best product for us, as we are aware at this time. OK, and and the and Miss Fang mentions in her email and I don't know if she sent this to everybody. She sent it to me. I, I, I don't know wh where that went, but she mentions a cancellation clause for the following reasons. I've never in, in my experience with building the contracts, I've never heard anybody talk about a cancellation clause. Is that something that's commonly done or no or? Well, I can tell you that all of our contracts have termination language which means that we have the ability to terminate any contract um, for a variety of reasons, including um, lack of funding. It, we can terminate for convenience. We can terminate for cause if a vendor has not performed on a specific contract. So that language is standard in all of our contracts and certainly not unique to this. OK, great. Thank you very much for your help. Certainly. Ms. Harvey, you may be muted. Thank you. I am muted and just talking. Uh, 
I, I only had one additional uh, question in just kind of wanting to get an overview. Uh, you note know in the contract um, uh, notations that this uh, Zello went through the uh, vetting process for instructional materials according to uh, board policy 6002. Um, is there anything that the building and contracts committee needs to know from that vetting process? Is there anything that sticks out or or we should take into consideration as we consider this contract? No, I believe the contract was presented to the um, curriculum committee. I don't believe I. In addition to being presented here tonight. There's Susie. nothing that I'm aware of. Right, right. It says it, it was the, on the, the April 27th meeting. I'm sorry, Doctor. Yes, Dr. and the, the contract hasn't the the um the product hasn't been piloted yet. So because it you know we have to get it approved first. So we do have a plan for pilot before it moves forward um to uh, full implementation. Okay. If that's what okay. you're in ref you're referencing, I'm not I'm not sure if that is say, that well, what you're talking about. I Dr. really Perfect. just wanted to make sure that it went. Is this is that Dr. McComas? Are you going to? It is. I'm yeah. so sorry, Miss Harvey. I was having okay. difficulty technology wise, but I think I'm good that's now. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you for your grace. Um, so, Dr. Ferguson, if you could uh, just share. So, one of the things we did in the presentation last week at Curriculum Committee was talk about the multi-year rollout plan. So, right. Dr. Mm -hmm. Ferguson, if you could explain how that that phase out. It's not that uh, the current product will be totally pulled out from under the rug. So I'll, I'll hand it over to you with you have more of the uh, details because you're closer to that work. Sure, sure. Um, thank you for the question again. So to ensure continuity of services during the transition from Naviance to Zello, our rising seniors will continue to have access to the current platform um, due to, con to we're going to have a contract extension um, that will expire on June 30, 2024. This will allow our seniors to complete their college application process in the current platform and eliminate any disruption in the college planning process. Our rising juniors, parents, teachers, and school counselors will also maintain their access to the current platform for the upcoming year. In the fall of 2023, our counselors and our rising juniors will also have access to the new platform, giving them a full school year to get accustomed to the new features. Teachers and parents will also have access to the new system um, beginning in the spring of 2024. So they're prepared to support their seniors in the start of the 24-25 school year. In the meantime, our students in grades seven through 10, will our Office of School Counseling will continue to provide academic, college and career and social emotional support during the transition for all students with the secondary scope and sequence, sequence classroom counseling lessons. Students in grades seven to 10 will also continue to have individual six year planning advising sessions as we migrate to the new platform. So moving for next year, seniors, Rising seniors will be will have access to the former platform so that they can finish out their senior year. Rising juniors will have access to the former platform, but they will start to use the new platform. That's our pilot phase, along with those school counselors throughout the 24, 23, 24 school year. It'll be a pilot for them, and then we'll go into the 24, 25, um, 24, 25 school year with um everyone the teachers and the parents starting to use it as well thank you thank you very much that was informative uh, are there any other uh questions or discussion i'd just like to add one more thing and forgive me again if this was mentioned while i was um disconnected um earlier but the new product does have additional features and functions that our current product does not have uh, and that was something Thing that was discussed at the curriculum committee and I know at least uh, well all the curriculum committee members did vote in support of it um, and one in particular commented that um, they were um, pleased to hear about those additional features and functions so just to try to uh, provide the full uh, picture thank you thank you 
If there are no other questions, uh, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove, please present contract three. Sure. JBO-707-23 Feedback and Customer Service Solutions for Schools. This is a new cooperative contract for a web-based survey platform uh, for the Department of Research, Accountability and Assessment. Approval is requested for a two year, four month contract with a one year option and a four month option to extend with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $140,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlove, please proceed with contract four. Yes, CWA-103-23 Milk and Juice. Uh, this is a con contract modification to extend the contract by one year and increase contract spending authority by $4.5 million, bringing the revised total contract spending to uh, authority to $8,650,000 with one awarded vendor approved by uh, the board on Tuesday, August 9th, 2022. Are there any questions? Ms. Harvey, I have one. Absolutely, Mr. McMillian, please proceed. Mr. Hartlove, is this the kind of thing that, do we get reimbursed from the federal government from this or for somebody? Um, yeah, we, we do, and I don't know if uh, uh, Mr. Salerno, if you want to uh, take that question. We, uh, yeah, this this would be providing um, milk and juice and, and products from the dairy for our national school lunch and breakfast programs. There are federal and state reimbursements involved um, with this program, and we also increased it by three hundred uh, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars because we are moving to the community eligibility program next year where we will be feeding all students for free. So we we felt like we needed that uh, additional funds uh, to be able to supply uh, the milk and juice products that we need for the increased participation. So you anticipate, so uh, I see a revised total contract spending authority of $8,650,000. So do you think at some point in time we're going to get that money back? Yeah, I, I think uh, what, what we're saying, uh, Mr. McMillian, is that we we procure the we we procure the milk, we sell it to st uh, we students uh, that participate in the lunch program get the milk, and then we are reimbursed from the federal government uh, because of the program, the, the the free lunch program that we are currently in. So I did I say anything uh, incorrect there, Mr. Salerno? No, sir. That was that was correct. OK, thank you very much. So uh, this is Mrs. Harvey. I, I just want to make sure I'm seeing the math correctly. We're asking for a one year extension of four point five million. Our previous contract was for. A little less than a year. And was four point one million with the three hundred and fifty thousand dollar increase based on the expanded CEP program. But when you look at prior fiscal year, it says the average annual expenditure was 2.2 plus million. And the year to date spending is 2.2 plus million. So there's about a $2 million difference, unless I'm misreading this, from our contract authority versus what we're actually spending. Ms. Harvey, this is Melanie Webster. I'm going to take some of that question and then if uh, Mr. Salerno or Mr. Hartleib would like to add some, they're certainly welcome to. Um, at the time the exhibit was prepared back two months ago, we were only a portion of the way through the school year, so that 2.2 is actually our spend up until the point that the exhibit is prepared. So it's not a full year, full school year. We would expect that the new, uh, we do expect to spend 4.1 this school year for um, these products 
And that's why Mr. Salerno has asked us to increase this a little bit um, for your approval for next school year. And just to piggyback on that, this is spending authority. It doesn't mean we we spend it. It just gives us the ability to spend up to this amount. But we procure milk. You know, milk is something that does not have a long shelf life. So we procure milk as we as we need it. Um, and you know, so so we're not buying milk that we don't need or buying too much milk. We're buying the milk that we need um, in a timely manner. And uh, we're just making sure we have enough authority to get all the milk that we need for all the students that participate in in meals. Uh, I understand, but just to make sure that I'm clear, uh, because I understand that the spending authority is not necessarily what will be spent, but almost doubling the spending authority um, is, a, is a little concerning to me, but what I think I'm hearing and correct me if I'm wrong, is that this 2.2 plus million is reflective of half of the school year? That is accurate. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are mm -hmm. there any other questions? Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you to all the staff for presenting and answering our questions and engaging in discussion uh, regarding the contracts. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 10 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Rod McMillian. Is there a second? Second, Emory Young. Thank you, Mr. Young and Mr. McMillian. Uh, we will now take a roll call vote. Ms. Fayette. Thank you. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there being three in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts one through 10 will be moved forward to the board. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee meeting will be held on Monday, June 12th, 2023 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for joining us. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Goodbye.